On today's show, we highlight moving water. Up first, adrenaline seekers get their fix up north. Turns out one of Minnesota's prettiest rivers is one of the wildest too. There we go. Meet a fishing guide who lives for life on rivers and the story of a state park on the St. Croix. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Hey there, Laura and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. Today, we start on turbulent water. The white water of Minnesota's upper St. Louis River. Photojournalists Kyle Heidenreich and Josh Bryant headed north to discover why this forgotten river might suddenly have a new identity. It's known as Minnesota's Adrenaline Center. we play on is called the St. Louis River. We're about 15 minutes southeast of Duluth, Minnesota. When I get here in the morning, I pull up, I make sure that everything's still here. Generally, when I come here though, to be quite honest, my wife has already opened everything up. I'm just showing up and hopefully jumping in a boat. <laughs> she, she spoils me that way. It was my husband's idea to purchase his business. One day out of the blue, I just bought a rafting company. No, um, Blue Bong, our director of operations, convinced me to go in on, on this thing. Normally we're not scrambling to do this, but both Blue and I and Steph all have full-time plus jobs, so. Your slip is a ticket to your trip. That's saying, I'm ready, I'm good to go. You're gonna hand that ticket to one of my young guides, who's then gonna trade you and give you a vest. So lean forward, put the paddle in, and sit up. He loves it. Uh, he would live on the river if I let him. Chris would love to get rid of his day job and do this 24-7. If we could do this year round, we'd, be, we'd both be out here all year. We all have full-time jobs. This is more of a vocation and a, and a dream and something that we can do to share with other people. We're going with Chris. Chris is fun. He grew up in Duluth, him and his wife both did, and they weren't aware of this. They literally go out west and go rafting. And when I brought it up to him, hey, uh, the raft company used to work first for sale. They're like, rafting in Minnesota, what? You know, they're even where like that. And so when we discovered, I'm like, everybody needs to know about this. In this stretch, it progressively goes from class ones to class twos to class three, fours. The series of six rapids. The wave is the first one. So as you're going through the wave, we punch through it the first time, and then we come back around, and we do what's called an eddy out. We turn into the flat water, we paddle back up, and we actually try surfing it. Paddle, 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 paddle. Push your bow into the backside of the other wave, and you basically get a lap full of water, and everybody starts yahooing, and they get used to paddling hard, they use the water tent. and then it goes to boat smear, and then it goes to, into a canyon where we have a break, and then we hit hidden hole. And they all progressively get bigger and bigger and, and funner and funner. And then we go over the big drop. It's a six to eight foot drop that the river runs over. It creates this really neat ramp. And then it drops into a drop, and you got this nice wall of water you're gonna hit. Certainly when people turn around and look back upstream, they always see that as the, wow, I just went down that rapids. I 
looking for the, the opportunity to teach something to the people in front of me and share that enjoyment of the river and that, that enjoyment of this activity that is you know, not really all that accessible to a lot of people. I'd do this for a living if I could make a living at it. I'm working on it. <laughs> Up next, we team up with a fishing guide who delivers on a river fishing dream. That's a dandy. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers, Alumacraft, Chase on the Lake, and by Connecticut. Up next, my dad takes a break from lakes to explore a river. You might say his fishing guide has a soft spot for moving water. Rivers are quiet to me. There's not a lot of other boaters. It's a lot of nature. It's very quiet. While most of us love our lakes, this Minnesotan loves his rivers. There we go, got one. Oh, that was a good call. Another walleye. And you can catch these guys even in, sometimes even in the middle of the day out here. I mean, they, they can, they bite really well. Brandon Nyquist is a river fishing guide. He also has a real job, as they say, but river guiding is his passion. You don't have to necessarily have a jet boat, you can put canoe in and do a float trip. A lot of that's pretty popular to do a float trip. Besides solitude, rivers can offer bended rods and tight lines. The fishing is phenomenal. I mean it's the bass and the, the walleyes bite really well out here. If you're not targeting one or two species, if you just want to catch fish, you can't go wrong with a night crawler on a river. Fine, but I'm sticking with a walleye whisperer bait. That didn't take long with a minnow. No. Huh? <laughs> no. There's another spot just like a minute or two up. We might anchor up and give it a shot there, too. You're the guide. You're the guide. Next on my river bucket list, fighting smallies. Well, that's got to be a guaranteed fish. That, there we go. Fish on. Whoa, he's getting me wet. Beauty. There we go. You know, on the on the river, a lot of times it comes down to the cast. If you cast and you're within six inches to a foot from the bank, the closer you can get it to the bank, the better chance you'll have to catch the fish. Well, there's a bunch of smallmouth right there. This guy just thinks he's big. Come on, baby. Whoa. Thank you, buddy. It's a big one, buddy. I'll get the net. You just don't quit. Oh, he's like an anchor down there. <laughs> there, there we go. go. That's a dandy. Sometimes it all comes together, this pursuit called fishing. The place, the time, the fish, the lure, and you. This was one of those times. <laughs> We floated into a bass mother load. I said that's where the big bass is gonna be. Yes, sir, buddy. Thank you for playing the game. Yeah! <laughs> Good fish. I think we're gonna have to net this guy too. Oh. He wanted that baby, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. Creepers, creepers. Beauty. How about that? Oh, that was a good jump. Oh, another one. They are aggressive, they're hungry. Author Norman McLean once wrote, eventually all things merge into one and a river runs through it. 
there. The author didn't mention runs through a gathering of hungry smallmouth. <laughs> <laughs> you can just call it. Oh. Boy. <laughs> Is that the fish of the day, Brandon? Pretty so. close to it, huh? Yeah. Oh, he's gorgeous. <laughs> if I said that Brandon Nyquist is the best guide on a river you've never heard of, what do you think of that? I think that'd be amazing. <laughs> this is my favorite spot in the park. Still ahead, we take a walk in the park on a river and later, Minnesota Bound Classic, all about building with birch bark. Closed captioning is brought to you by Minnesota Rebat. Sticking with our river theme, we're headed to Interstate. It's Minnesota's second oldest state park. And guess what? It's on a river. Interstate State Park is just 288 acres, so it's one of the smaller parks in the state park system. But great things can come in small packages, and even though it's small, there is an incredible amount to see and do here. Interstate State Park is located along the St. Croix River in Taylor's Falls, Minnesota, and it's only about 45 miles northeast of the Twin Cities. Here in the park in the springtime, which is a fantastic time to explore, we have four miles of hiking trails that offer a lot of diversity of scenery. There's some beautiful overlooks over a wider area of the valley from our river trail. If you're someone who's interested in birds or wildflowers, spring is a great time to get out. We're getting a lot of very small, colorful birds called warblers. We have a beautiful display of wildflowers on our river trail and our sandstone bluffs trail. The forest floor in some areas is covered with trillium that's blooming. So we have arrived at the widest pothole in the park, 26 feet wide. One of our most popular programs is our pothole tours. Glacial potholes were formed about 10,000 years ago in this park by a huge mile-wide river of glacial meltwater. As that was coursing south and carving through the very hard rock in this river valley, where it would start to spin and pick up gravel and sand and whip it around and around, it would create basically a liquid drill. And that water and sand was so powerful that it was able to drill very large holes into very hard basalt rock. So here we are actually inside of one of our glacial potholes. And this gives you an opportunity to feel the very old rock and then to feel how perfectly smoothed and polished the swirling sand and water finish them off. So this is the bottomless pit pothole. This is the deepest explored pothole in the world. Well, we'll continue on to Angle Rock. This is my favorite spot in the park. And we get to see the St. Croix River, some rapids that are going on right now because the river is kind of high. And the river comes and takes about a 90 degree turn around the rock that we're on right now before it continues downriver. So the rock that we've been walking over and under and through today is all basalt rock. And it's a very hard igneous rock that was formed by lava over a billion years ago. And as that lava cooled and hardened, we got these layers upon layers of basalt rock in this area. So we are going to get a chance to walk through an area here where a large boulder has cracked apart from our basalt wall. And we're going to squeeze through. And as you go, you'll get a chance to reach out and touch this billion year old rock. The basalt rock at the park, because of the way that it fractures, offers great hand and footholds for climbers. They're also climbing in an area where they can see the St. Croix River. So they have a fantastic backdrop during their climbing experience. The park is located not very far away from the Twin Cities area, but it's a completely different world that you enter when you step inside of it. You have an opportunity to walk on top of billion-year-old rock that has seen an incredible amount of history march past it. And so there's a lot of stories that the park has to tell. 
Minnesota Bound is brought to you by By the Yard Maintenance Free Outdoor Furniture, Running Aces Casino and Racetrack, Bent Creek Golf Club Eden Prairie, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes us way back to the workshop of Ray Bozell. Long ago, Ron Shera met Ray, a craftsman paying homage to the lost art of building with birch bark. Sometimes in America, free enterprise looks just like it should. This is Bill Haifman's Boat Works, founded in 1921 and still a-going. But if time ever stands still, it might be inside. Birch bark canoes are made here, made by hand, just as they were 500 years ago. So this here is just a birch bark. These are all cut to shape. Canoe maker Ray Bozell took over the business in 1981, a few years before Haifman, his mentor, and his wife's grandfather passed away. And the first two I made, my wife taught me on. And then after that, I worked for three years with Bill, and then he took early retirement at age 85. But nothing else about birch bark canoes has changed much. So it takes a lot of looking to find the right bark that you need for the canoe. So it's really amazing stuff. I mean, it's a lot stronger than what it looks like. To sew the birch bark pieces together, Bozell gathers roots from spruce trees in nearby swamps and keeps them wet in the Big Fork River, his backyard testing grounds. Well, I kind of like the swamp. I'm kind of a strange person, I guess. <laughs> the mosquitoes don't normally bother you in the swamp if you pick roots fast enough. They think you're crazy. They won't bite you. It'll take eight hours of stripping and splitting the roots to make 500 feet of bindings, enough to finish a 16-foot canoe. But you feel that there, that's, that's still flexible enough so that you can uh, wrap around the gunwales. In an average year, Bozell will make about 15 canoes, each selling for about $2,000. And each is an original. It's parts and pieces formed by hand tools older than the canoe builder himself. A cedar log is split and split again. What I have to get down to first is how wide I want my ribs and my lining. And so I just keep splitting it in a pie shape like this until I get what I want for thickness that way. It's also delicate hand work. So this here would be two ribs here now. Bozell says he works about 80 hours to complete a canoe, yet part of the process, making canoe ribs, seems more like a magical act. And what I do is I leave the, the ribs wider in the center so that they have some uh, beef for holding the shape of the canoe. And he never measures a rib. Yeah, mostly just eyeball everything. That's all they had to begin with, too. They didn't have Stanley rules and micrometers and stuff like that. So it's just kind of get to where it looks right, and there's a rib. Just that easy. Eventually, all of the assembled parts, the bark, ribs, and cedar gunnels, are lashed together with spruce root. Canoe number 205 is about to come off the assembly line. And this is what holds the whole canoe together, is the roots here. No nails or glue whatsoever, and it's just all held together by the black spruce roots. There's even a guarantee. If the roots ever break, he'll redo the bindings for nothing. <laughs> Lastly, Bozell's idea of quality control is to take a test pattern. I've had guys that come in, they want me to mass produce them and stuff, and they would sell them for me. I said, well, I don't want to do that. But when you make birch bark canoes and live history every day, fame and fortune is not in the company plan. This way I make enough to make a living for my family and, and uh, keeps me happy. <laughs> that and a river to paddle away. Plenty of notable personalities actually have owned Ray's canoes. Including Charles Carell and Lady Bird Johnson. Pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, that about does it for us. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.